Hi, this is Jeffrey Cohen. Week 10 in the markets. How are you? So let's get going. There's a lot to talk about. And um, I've opened up the chat. So if you're out there, you can ask me anything. A-M-A, -A, ask me anything. So a lot to talk about. We're going to start with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is over $56,000 again this week. Um, it's just it's uh it's very popular right now so if i talk a little bit about what i see i would say that i see um i see uh, fifty six thousand, but i also just see um a lot going on by the way the reason why i'm having difficulty with my system is because i bought a brand new mac thanks to our new client and so i want to share with you um We've been very successful, and uh, we're getting some good work going here. So, but uh, what it means is it's a little bit tougher to show, kind of what what's going on. So, but what you see it for the week, you see Bitcoin has been up. So it reached a low of uh, under fifty. It uh, it just touched fifty seven six, fifty seven five. So, Bitcoin's up, right? We actually picked up some other news this week which is China markets. China equity markets showed a lot of weakness. While there's a China um, Communist Party political event. And so the question is, um, if you're in China and they wipe out $1.3 trillion of Chinese equity market value, what happens, right? Well, first thing that happens is You've got to, uh, you have to find a place to put your money, right? So you see the market's falling. Maybe you put your money in Bitcoin. So maybe some of this new money coming into Bitcoin, pumping it up. Um, it's the idea that I may not get 100% of my dollar, but if I've got to take money, put it somewhere safe, then I can put it in Bitcoin. So who knows whether the, uh, the, the tough times in the Chinese market um, could have been tied to Bitcoin. Uh, there could be a correlation there. The other thing interesting is um, China's pricing has gone up. Well, it makes sense. Oil prices are rising, right? So oil prices are rising. Maybe the demand equation in the United States and other countries where China exports to not doing as well. And so now I've got... Um, I got some interesting things there. And um, so I just want to share with you, um, we got some trouble in China. So we're going to talk through some of the markets as well. Next thing I want to talk about is bonds. So, you know, I struggle, right? Because we, we work on the stocks. Why is this about bonds? But actually it should be. So let's talk about it. So when we look at our bond our bond models, we look at um, we look at U.S. government treasuries, and um, let's see if I can fix this so it shows up on the screen. And again, I apologize. New system, so it's uh, it's proving a little more difficult to share with you everything that I want to share with you. But so far, so good. So if we look at look at the long, I gotta do one more time here. I apologize. Um, hundred percent. So if we look at the yield curve, we could actually look at it by maturity. If we look at the thirty-year, um, you see it's up. Last close two point two nine, and we look at um, oh, it looks like one point five four for the ten-year, and the ten-year. You can see how the yields have um, were quite high, then down, then up again. So we've had an interesting um. Treasury yield curve, right? It's uh, it's very flat in the short, short range up to two years, and then it skyrockets from uh, effectively zero at the two year. Effectively, it's uh, 14 basis points, up to 229 basis points for 30 years. And what I've been reading, what I've been hearing is, so we've an issue with 10 years, right? Um, people want to bet against it. People believe that interest rates are going up, inflation's going up long-term inflation is going up. 
the U.S. government's printing money. They're, they've got stimulus. They've got monetary loosening and fiscal loosening. So they're thinking, oh, I want to be against it. But the problem is, so if we look at yields, this is a, this is a chart that maybe you're more familiar with. Um, we'll look at five days. We'll look at this is the 10-year yield. And you see it's 1.65. And you see that chart. Right, so it's been all week, it's been a little bit different, right? It goes down, it's going up, it's coming right down, and Friday, wow, through the roof, 1.635. I haven't seen a number that large in quite a while. So what that tells you is, um, people are making some serious bets into the weekend that, um, that basically the treasuries aren't worth, worth as much. And so interest rates are going up, inflation's going up, that's bad for stocks bad for stocks. I want you to hear that again. It's bad for stocks. When yields go up, it's bad for stocks. So this should be a terrible story, right? You know, stocks, it's, by the way, it's not that hard to predict that the yields are going up when we're starting to print money. Um, by the way, European Central Bank, ECB, came to the rescue. Uh, I can imagine like uh, David Hasselhoff on the beach in uh, Baywatch trying to, you know, save, save people. But uh, what's going on, right? So a lot of loosening. A lot of central banks are saying, look, I'm going to print money. I'm going to make it available to people. I'm going to keep, keep the liquidity flowing. That's good for stocks. So liquidity, good for stocks. Rising interest rates, bad for stocks. Inflation, bad for stocks. I, I don't know. I'm looking at this as it's Friday afternoon and maybe there's some uh, major market move into the weekend. Uh, I'm just not sure what's going on here. But if I look at the 10-year, I look and see that Thursday, it reached a pretty good low there of 1.50. I was feeling pretty confident. Now it's up to 1.63. And, um, you know, you had all the issues with the repo, with the rates going negative overnight. Um, different issue. So I look at this and I think, well, stocks must have done badly on, on Friday. So where are we? Where's the stocks? So... Let's take a look. I'm going to have to really um, take this down. I'm hoping that you can see with, uh, with what I'm doing here. So if we look at it for the day, then you look at, you know, Google, Facebook down. You look at some of the diagnostic firms are down. But in general, it's, it's pretty mixed. Tech is red. Financial's red. Financial credit is red. Uh, a lot of green out there. By the way, energy, mixed. Energy's mixed. So the first time, this is for the day that I've seen it. So interest rates rising <coughs> would make sense. Maybe I see more credit, uh, more defaults on the consumer side. Um, I see tech stocks dropping. But now let's look for the week. I, look at that. For the week, it's green, green, green. Everyone made money this week in the markets. So there were some scares. Um, we actually watched uh, GME when we should have been coding. And uh, it was amazing. I, I caught it right when the when the thing uh, had the 15-minute drop. Boom. Down like 100 points. And then I put on a Rocky training video for three minutes. And uh, by the end of the song, it had gone back up to 260-240 and then halted again. And uh, you can't make this stuff up. I mean, there is just a lot of movement this week. A lot of crazy liquidity sucking movement, right? With stocks going up and stocks going down, a lot of it. But you take a look for the week, and this has been an amazingly positive week, except for a couple of story stocks, just to point out. General Electric sold off its, um, it didn't sell it off. It sold its aircraft leasing business, its aircraft financing business, to another company, but I believe it owns 48% of that company now. And, uh, you know, so GE is going to pay off a little bit of debt, get rid of it, and then it's going to own half. It's, uh, it's, it's a spin out monetization. And you got some tiny cruise line stocks. That's what I was looking at. So General Electric and the cruise lines are down. Everyone else is up. Um, it's crazy market, crazy week. Uh, Live Nation Entertainment's down. It's crazy times. Just take a look. Look at this. Look at the markets. 
you can't make it up. It's a it's a great healthy market. And so this week it's been going up. So what's interesting is the Finn Twitter community that I follow that I'm now actually a part of with the team, Chicago Quantum. Um, it's very negative. Negative Nellies out there. They're cranky. They're losing money. I don't know what they're thinking. They're predicting things and they're just very negative. I don't know. I'm not negative on the market. Right? I, I mean, you have to be looking at downside risk. It's a it's a mature market, a mature bull since 2008. But uh, I don't think we're going anywhere right now based on what I'm seeing. So there were some other things I thought was important. So did I just call that it's not a top? Yes. I see no reason to think that next week is the end of mankind. I think it's, uh, I think with the stimulus, I think with uh, monetary easing, you still got some runway, but it doesn't mean not to do uh, not to do some homework. So and uh, be ready when uh, when things go bad. I just want to mention uh, Roblox. So back in the day, we had a chance to buy Google stock just after it IPO'd, and I'm not going to say that Roblox is another Google, but I will say from uh, from my kids' perspective, they love Roblox. They think it's the future of gaming. Um, and so I would say if you've got a few shekels and you can uh, invest, Roblox is probably not bad. There's no technical analysis here. It's just um, we had a conversation with the kids. Um, it was my son's birthday. And uh, it's, it's good. It's uh, it's the kind of game that you can play for, for decades. Um, Tesla. Thrilling ride. I would say Tesla was as thrilling as being in the electric vehicle being on an empty road and hitting the accelerator and feeling the G's, right? It was like crazy. So stock went down very, very fast. Stock went up very, very fast, right? Now you might say, Jeff, why is this important? It's a liquidity destroying event. So I do think that you're seeing some, some liquidity drivers here. Um, you saw the meme stocks, GameStop and AMC. Up, down, up, down. I mean, there's a lot of movement. AMC, not as much. But uh, I will say that our model picked AMC as a negative pick. And I'm going to explain that. Um, we now have a new model. We have two models. We have an up model and a down model. And AMC was one of the 130 that we looked at. And the reason is that AMC just moves a lot. I don't think it's going anywhere. The company used the last time it went up and it it paid down a lot of its debt, which I think is great. Um, but there's just a lot of volatility for no motion. So uh, we'll talk. Remind me. We'll talk about that. Um, the dollar. Where'd the dollar go? <laughs> What's going on with the dollar? All right, let's take a look. So <coughs> it's interesting because, you know, I love following the dollar. By the way, for those that are watching, thank you. Um Please feel free to, to post a comment. And if you really like what you hear, um, please hit the subscribe button so that you get notifications because we're not advertising the video anymore. And so I want to make sure you can find it if you're looking for it, right? We do this every week. Um, we've actually had somebody ask us if they want to make a book out of all the content that we're, we're sharing here each week. So book 1950 for the Euro. What's interesting is if you look for the week, the euro, there it is, it dropped. I remember talking about it on Tuesday with someone, right? A buck 1840 for the euro. I hadn't seen a buck 18 in this thing in a long time, right? And then throughout the rest of the week, the dollar retraced, right? Up until Friday, the dollar was, was um, weakening. And then you have a strength then a week. So basically the dollar um, has taken away some of its um, some of its urgency. And so I'm going to go look at it for a month because look at how much the dollar had strengthened. So uh, obviously just to say it for people maybe that aren't in the in the currencies, when you look at a euro, a, a buck 18.50 for the euro, you're basically saying that the euro is um, doesn't take that many dollars to buy it so the dollar's stronger so it's a strong dollar and so 
That means that U.S. goods are going to be more expensive overseas. Other goods are going to be cheaper overseas. Obviously, if you go to Europe now and uh, a cup of coffee is a euro, it only costs you a buck 18 versus when I went, it was a buck 30, buck 35. And so, by the way, coffee's not a euro. It's like five euros, right? So now you're talking like instead of 650, maybe it's only six bucks. And so it's cheaper. We're going to spend in Europe. Europe's not going to spend here. It's too expensive. And so this is interesting for our economy, right? Because it's it's a net negative for exports from the United States. And uh, it's bullish for other countries exporting to the United States. So we, uh, we become a little more uh, popular for those who want to make money on the United States. And so... Um, just interesting. So it's it's a it's just something to look at, right? So the dollar has been weakening. I look at the the euro, but it, it's true for others as well, other currencies as well. Um, let's look at the world. <clears throat> how the world do? And this is a day chart. I'm not sure how to show you a weekly chart, but what I will say is, for the most part, most of the most of the indices are at 52 um, week highs. So we're looking at a very, very strong, strong market. Now the VIX is down to almost 20. It's, it's uh, about 20.8. So the VIX is the fear index. So when you see the VIX going down, you see, so you see the market's getting a little bit more calm. Basically, there's less volatility, less cost less to insure against volatility. Now you look at the Hang Seng, it's not at a 52-week high. It really has been suffering. That's one of the, the China... China ones, SSE, Shenzhen, these are all off 52 week highs. And so it's hard when you see um, bifurcation in the markets. Now, Malaysia, yep, New Zealand, yep, it's not, a, not at the 52 week. Um, South Korea is still looking pretty strong. Taiwan is very strong right now. Um, yeah, Mexico, very strong right now. And um, let's see if I can find Canada. I'm pretty sure Canada is pretty strong right now, too. Um, Europe. Europe looks good, too. 52-week kind of levels. And so um, Australia, close. Close to 52-week. So these are all highs. So my point is global markets look strong. China caught a cold. And so China caught a cold. Bitcoin's going through the roof. I don't know that these are connected, but in my mind, I connect them. So what does this have to do with quantum computing? I'm not sure. Just something to think about when you're out there and you're in your trading. So these are more like uh, macro trends. I want to point out a stock. So I don't know what I want to talk about here. I want to talk about it. So people are negative. Market's really high. It's a very mature market. So we came up with the Chicago Quantum Net Score basically a model that some people could use to buy puts or to short, right? We basically built a whole new model. And um, I'm going to show it to you. You can either find the best stocks, efficient portfolio, or the worst stocks, the inefficient portfolio, using the Chicago Quantum Net Score. What, what are you talking about? Why would you want to pick dogs, right? Well, there's a reason. If you think the market's going up, you want stocks that go up when the market's going up. You want good stocks, great stocks, right? And so if you want, you get have great stocks, but some people want to find the bears. They want to find the dog, dog stars. Because um, <coughs> there might be kids listening. We're not going to say what my client actually called them, but uh, let's just say that scary bear face is pretty good, right? So if you think the market's going to drop, you need a portfolio of stocks that goes down when the market drops so that you've got um, ups and downs. Maybe you could even be 50-50. You could be market direction neutral. Just saying. By the way, I'm going to put on a special hat for those who like it. So... Sometimes you don't want to pick a direction. No direction. There's bulls and there's bears, right? You can make money both ways. Bulls make money. Bears make money. 
pigs get slaughtered. So I want to suggest that if you think the market's dropping, we are working, we're continuing to refine. But I will say first week we picked a stock, real dog stock. It was one of the, the three that we picked. Wow, is this thing a dog? Picked it at 12 and a half. I think it's trading at nine now. That's a week later, right? So you would have shorted it at 12 and a half. You'd have bought it back at nine. But honestly, I did some more fundamental research and they owe 80 plus million dollars to a company called the Drake Asset Management Company in the Isle of Jersey. Not New Jersey, but Jersey, like the offshore place. I'm sure Drake's going to be very accommodating when the company can't pay its debts and it goes into Chapter 11 on March 31st, ACY. So I just want to share that with you. Our model picked that stock. That's a big, 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 uh, big bear. Just show you the chart. Let's talk about why we would pick it. So SMLP, you guys have heard about that stock, by the way. We are long SMLP. We continue to be long SMLP. I can't tell you how long we are SMLP. We love SMLP. We think this stock's going to the moon. But we picked the stock in November. We picked it right around there. We picked it at the worst possible time. It, this thing was like a dog. It wasn't moving at all. By the way, these are um, reverse split adjusted numbers that you see. Uh, they did a 15 to 1 reverse split so that they could at least stay in the New York Stock Exchange because they were trading under a dollar and they were going to be delisted. So, um, God, what a dog at the time. But the model said, take a look. You like SMLP early November. I want to say it was November 2nd. Um, it reaffirmed, I think, two weeks ago, SMLP. And in fact, we ran another run and it reaffirmed this week as one of seven stocks to hold. So, Still likes SMLP. We're pretty happy about that. But here's what SMLP looks like. So you look at it, and there's not a lot of volatility, but there's a little upward tail. Now, I've, I've gone back years with this, with this chart because I just want to show it to you. So that's a good stock. Not a lot of volatility. Look at it over one year. You can see, not moving much, but nice upward trend with the market, right? So you like that. What don't you like? What you don't like is this other one. Get rid of it. It's a dog. Roof. Flat. Went up in uh, May. Pretty much flat, flat, flat. Not really moving much. Little movement, but not, not much with the market. And then all of a sudden the thing takes off like a jackrabbit. Okay? It's up, it's up, it's up. It's crazy up. Okay? Still not a lot of movement though. Pretty flat. Pretty flat. Like there's like a like a horizontal floor under the thing at like eight bucks a share. So somebody wants to keep this thing at eight bucks a share or more, right? I don't understand. To be honest with you, I have no idea what's going on with the stock. But what the model saw was a tremendous amount of volatility, tremendous volatility, with uh, without a lot of movement. That's a, that's a recipe for disaster. I'm going to take that hat off now. I'm going to put on a winning hat. Everyone likes a winner. The Bears, Chicago Quantum. So um, this is why the model picked the stock, right? And so it's a meme stock. It's crazy. But we did our homework. You got debt issues. Serious, serious debt issues with this company. By the way, they lease aircraft. Regional jet small aircraft. So General Electric just sold off their aircraft leasing business. Just saying. I wouldn't be surprised if the stock hits two bucks by the end of the month. And uh, we don't short. We do not have a position in the stock. This was purely for academic purposes after we ran the model. So uh, just know that that's out there. So we have bulls and we have bears now. Just want you to know, right? We could find a needle in a haystack and we can find the worst portfolios possible. That's pretty cool. That's an evolution in our firm. I just want to share that with you. I think this is very important. So we talked about how the markets are up. I do want to talk about, though, the 
the consistency of the negativity. And so I saved a, um, a window. Let me just make sure I can find it. Probably not going to find it. By the way, again, just to share, SMLP, it's, uh, it's a good stock. We like it. Close to 29 today. Um, we're very long SMLP. And uh, we did a little bit of homework on uh, book value, book value per share. So let me just give you a very simple way to think about SMLP. You look for a stock that pays a healthy dividend. Now it passes its earnings through, it's a limited partnership, but it generates a lot of cash. So in theory, it should lose money, but pay cash. That way you get a tax loss and you get cash. In this case, it makes money and it makes cash, but it doesn't pay the cash. So you have to be patient a little bit. So why do you think, Jeffrey, that this stock is worth more than 29 bucks? Now, this is not the model talking anymore. The model still picks it. But this is fundamental research. So we did a little bit of homework. Oh, I don't have access to it here. All right, fine. I'll just have to tell you what we found. What we found was that the stock has a book value of 120 bucks. Let me put this down here. It's actually 122.50 according to um, to Yahoo Finance. Now. They're, um, they're going to be buying back or trading back for uh, their preferreds, for half the preferreds that are out there, um, up, up to 80,000 preferred shares, which is $80 million of indebtedness, with another um, $149 per share in, um, in um, deferred but unpaid dividends that are accumulated. And so, so if you basically are, uh, are trading it in, I'm going to pick another winning team here. So if you're trading it in, you're trading in at par value 1,149 plus whatever was accrued since since the end of the year. So maybe you're at 160 bucks, so it's a 1,160. And you're trading it in for 27 commons. So what does that mean? That means we eliminate $92 million of indebtedness for no cash. Reduction in the uh, leverage ratio of the firm from a 5.1 at the end of the year. I, I don't know what this takes it to, but maybe it takes it to 4.5. It'll lower its interest cost and increases its financial flexibility. This is very attractive. But after you do that and you issue 2.16 million more shares, you say, oh, Mr. Cohen, what does it do to your book value? So somebody else did this for me. It's approximately $100 a share after the reduction in $92 million in debt from one half preferreds, Series A, 9.5% perpetual. Yep. So, 100 bucks a share. So, typically, pipelines that are not in financial distress trade around two times book. Uh, you see some at one, one and a half. You see some at three or four. Figure it's two times book. And so, that's 200 bucks a share. Now, I don't know, right? Stock trades 29 bucks today versus 200. pretty good it's pretty good and what kind of cash they're going to generate I, I don't know but let's say even before double e they're going to generate uh, 150 million in cash and you're going to divide that by now it's 6.1 million let's say they they do the preferred thing let's say it's let's say it's even eight let's make it simple 
let's make it 160 million in cash per year. And let's say it's 8 million shares. Well, that's 20 bucks a share, right? Now they may not distribute all that. They may only distribute, let's say half or 10 bucks a share in distributions. Let's call it 2022 or 2023. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's that's crazy talk right there. That's uh, that's my kids' retirements, not my retirement. I love SMLP. We are very long SMLP, and uh, we're always looking for chances to get longer. Um, we love the stock. Nothing is nothing bad to say about it. Love the management team. Had a chance to talk to their head of investor relations recently. Asked him a question. Wow, was he helpful? And so uh, I just got to say, it's uh, it's a great company. So thank you. We love SMLP. Let's keep going. So I just want to say we get we like stock twits. So if you like the stock market, and you're looking for information, kind of like. Uh, there's as many pumper and dumpers out there as there are serious people posting, but um, I like it. I get their email, so I'm not being paid, by the way, by by anyone for this uh, for this work that we do. But I just want to share it with you. <laughs> Records are meant to be broken. Good evening, everyone. This is from last night. Major every major index closed in positive territory. The Nasdaq led the pack, gaining 2.5%. The Russell rallied 2.3%, closed at all-time high. S&P 500 and Dow Jones finished at record highs. Record highs. We run our model for clients, and we actually generate um, the returns of the markets. And I will tell you that we, um, we produced a screenshot that we threw out on Twitter this week. By the way, if you don't follow us, Follow us on Twitter. We're Chicago Quantum on Twitter. So just do a quick search on Chicago Quantum. By the way, for a little bit of fun, we changed our logo to uh, Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris is awesome. By the way, we're going to watch the movie. We got it from our uh, local library. Chuck Norris versus Bruce Lee. By the way, when Chuck Norris... Fights Bruce Lee, who wins? Uh, I'll leave that to the end of the uh, end of the podcast. So we tweeted it. Uh, basically, the Russell I want to say is up. The Russell's the two thousand um, smallest stocks. It's up like sixty five percent this year. The Nasdaq I think is up like over fifty percent this year. The the S and P five hundred is up like thirty five percent this year. Guys, these are unbelievable numbers. Now, a year ago was the fall of the pandemic. So you could just say, Jeff, your measurement bias, right? Because you're measuring a year from now, a year ago. But still, that's a tremendous growth. And this market just keeps reaching new highs. And so what I would say is just be thoughtful about the fact that it's a mature rally. It's been rallying a long time, right? Let's take a look at the S&P 500. This is a screenshot that I produced for you guys. Um, let's take a look at the S&P over the past year. Oh, by the way, Anaconda. Sorry about that. No. You can see some of the coding things I have to do, but uh, that's okay. We're going to go to Finviz. By the way, Finviz, thank you. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. By the way, this is SMLP. While I'm sticking it up on the screen there, this is a daily print for um, kind of looks like a slow roll. Look at that thing. God, I love SMLP. We're so long. So long. We love it. Um, Look at that breakout. But I'm not here to show you SMLP. I, I promise you, no, I'm not. It's, uh, I want to show you the whole thing. I'm going to show you the map. 
And I want to show you the map for the year. I just want you to take a look at some of these numbers. Um, I want you to be uncomfortable. By the way, White Sox, best team in baseball. I want you to be uncomfortable for a minute. I want you to think about it. So over the past year, Amazon's up 71%. Tesla's up 451%. Honeywell is up 38%. These are, these are blue chips. Right? Apple, 77%. Microsoft, 54%. We look at just some of the energy names. right? Exxon Mobil, this is a behemoth. It's up 46%, right? Chevron, 34%. I mean, just, you, you can't um, you can't make this stuff up. J.P. Morgan Chase is up 60%. Uh, Bank of America, 64%. So you've got a market that's very frothy right now from its, uh, from its March lows. And um, it's healthy out there. I want you to know, we look at the world. The world is just as green with the exception of some parts of Brazil. The whole world is green for the past year. So you made money if you were in the market for the past year. Um, <clears throat> but I got to tell you, it, it may not last forever. So I just want you to know that. So now I want to talk a little bit more about our firm. So our firm participated, our head of products, Alex Kahn, participated in diversity for quantum computing conference. It's sponsored in part by IonQ. Um, we do support diversity. We are a diverse firm ourselves. Um, if you're on calls, you'll notice we're diverse, but it's also, um, we love, we don't actually see people for what they look like. Um, it doesn't matter what you look like. It matters what you bring to the table. And if you share the same mission and vision uh, right now, we're not paying salaries, so we'll take anyone with the kind of skills that we need and with the integrity that we require being a founding member of quantum economic development consortium the fact that just today we had a um, u.s federal government request for a quote um, we hold ourselves to the highest standards we are audited we are checked out we pass we um we're very careful with our due diligence. We're very careful with our conflicts of interest. And so but we love diversity. And uh, if you have an interest in quantum research coupled with the financial markets, we're an obvious place for you. Um, if we continue to make money in the markets, we're going to be able to buy a building and then we're going to have a place for you to come to work. Everyone's going to have their own office, right? Actually, I, there's an office I want to buy right now. It's uh, It's got six offices. Each one's about 10 feet apart from each other with a door. Um, we can keep it safe. Um, but the point is, if your research is on um, quantum walks, quantum walks on graphs, we have another department that works on those. We've got another guy who's working on different kind of different stuff. He does teaching and he does that. And we have different people that have different application areas. And so, but we do support diversity in quantum computing. We think it's very important. Um, you know, be diverse. Um, just a shout out to IonQ. IonQ is, um, well, they say it's gone public, but actually they're just um, allowing themselves to be acquired by a SPAC. Uh, it's a bit risky. I understand that the SPAC is under, uh, under investigation right now um, by a law firm. So just be careful if you're trying to invest that way. But uh I like the way Quantum Computing Inc. did it. They bought interactive beverages. They picked up a nice shell. They then put their company in it, changed the name. There you go. Listed company. We're not ready to even come close to, to that kind of stuff, but um, it's interesting. So uh, IonQ, good luck, guys. Um, I hope you can get past the little uh, the bumps. But they did raise money from the SPAC, and um, hopefully that will help them uh, to continue their research. So I want to talk about natural gas energy, right? So this is working gas and underground storage over the past five years from EIA. So U.S. Energy Information Administration. So you see this, um, I'll teach you how to read the chart. Love it. So the Bollinger Bands or the five-year min and max range, that's what's gray. So you can kind of see the, the area where it could move. 
and there's a very natural a natural um, evolution right in February March it's cold out so we use the natural gas that we have in storage um, part of the challenge with not having enough pipelines is that you have the gas but you can't get it to your customers because you don't have the pipelines and so we need more pipelines, not less in the United States, if we want to have energy security, if we want to be able to keep people warm in wintertime. And, uh, I mean, we could pump it out of the ground. That's no problem, right? We got ducks. We got ducks behind the pipelines all over this uh, continental United States and Canada. Um, by the way, love Canada. We, uh, we have to support their energy, energy uh, agenda as well. I believe it's important. And we sell energy into Mexico to keep them energy secure. And so, um, so what happens, of course, is uh, you know this time of year, you start to use up the stocks because it's cold, and you use it to heat up the houses. And so, the place where the the dark gray line is, right? That's the five year average. And you can see over last year when energy prices have been uh, not doing so well. We were above the five-year average. So first time, we're below the five-year average. Natural gas is below its five-year average in terms of storage, what's in storage. You can see there's plenty of room here, right? But if this continues, if we are not producing enough energy or if we're selling it as liquid natural gas, I understand that Exxon is... Uh, or, uh, XTO has a liquid natural gas contract. If we're going to start selling our natural gas overseas, we're going to have less and less in storage. You might see the price of natural gas rise. That means more wells. More wells means pipelines producing more cash flow, which means more distributions. So I just want to point it out, right? A lot of things are connected here. You've seen natural gas above five-year highs since it looks like about December, January of 2020. We're finally working off those excess storage. I think that's important to talk about. Um, so what have we been up to, right, as a firm? Well, glad you asked, let me tell you. I'll try to make this a little bit bigger. I mean, it's so funny. We're such a small firm. We really aren't um, aren't that uh, impressive yet. But uh, to be honest, we're getting things done. So we talked about how we participated in Women in Quantum Conference. Uh, we will be participating in a few more conferences. We um, we participated in a Quantum Economic Development Consor Consortium uh, meeting the big plenary session. We are officially founding member. We got our co-signed participation agreement. Yay. <clears throat> it's awesome. It means we, we were vetted. We're trusted. We deserve that trust and we will work hard to, uh, to continue to, to deserve that trust. We are also Better Business Bureau A plus rated. We got an award this year for no complaints, no customer complaints, which is awesome. So keeping a firm in good shape. We spent a lot of time on our model. So we created a short model or an inefficient portfolio model. That's pretty darn awesome. We can now pick stocks that are probably going to go down. We can pick stocks that go up. We can pick stocks that go down. You bet whichever way you want. That's why I put the hat on, right? It could be long. It could be short. All weather, we make you money. So we did have a really bad pick this week, and I want to talk about it because I think we learned a lot about it. So, and first off, Jeff, why would you ever talk about a bad pick? Because that's how you learn. Sundance Energy. So the model likes Sundance Energy because there was not a lot of movement. Even recently, right? And so basically the model look good. I mean, it was going up when the market was going up. It would come back down. It was some good movement. But Sundance Energy, you know, it looked like you didn't have a lot of volatility. And it was one of those where you could pair it with like a food and beverage company or a restaurant company. 
and you could probably make some money. But what happened was, you see this drop right here? We picked it the day before the drop. We picked it three hours before they declared Chapter 11, pre-packaged plan. I got to tell you, that's very embarrassing. And so there's a question of, you know, when you run a model and you don't do fundamental analysis, you have to... Uh, you have to you have to do your due diligence before you invest, and so I, I would suggest to you that um, not every stock we pick's a winner. Some go up. Some uh, I was looking one of them we had picked at like eighteen bucks. It's at forty seven right now in in four months. I mean, there's some that are triple baggers, but there's others like this one where we picked it at two thirty and it's at one fifty. And so I will say um, we're not perfect, and so. Just want to share that with you. It's uh, it's good to be transparent. We removed our dividend bias. So let me explain what that means. So uh, we actually made a blog post about this. A dividend bias comes if you're building a model that's looking at stock prices and the movement of stock prices. Well, a company that issues a dividend the adjusted stocks that are held in historical data, which you would use to run your model, those adjusted prices are reduced by the percentage payout of the dividends on the day of X dividend or X dividend date. And so we've made a different kind of an adjustment. So think about it this way. It only paid one dividend a year. It was 10% of the stock price. Okay. So all the prices from before that day are down 10%. So any volatility, any variance is going to be down. By the way, volatility variance is down squared. So it's a dividend squared. Expected returns are down just um, alpha, basically what we call it, the dividend payout. So we can net those and we can make just one adjustment. So you have to add back the dividend. And so we have come up with a pretty elegant way of doing that in our model. So that's out there, which is great. We've also been looking for a source of market data services. So if anyone out there knows of a good cost-effective source for market data services for equity prices, equity volumes, um, we're interested. And uh, it needs to work with Python so we can easily pull the data. The challenge that we have is... Um, it has to allow us to use it in a commercial model and it's a commercial model which is priced not to make very much money but to help people to invest better in the markets and so but we're looking i mean if we have to pay we have to pay it's no problem um a a good source of market data services that is cost effective for a firm that is uh, still roughly speaking pre-revenue stage next thing is we bought a new computer Bought an iMac Pro. It's got 64 gig of ECC RAM. It's powerful. It has more RAM than our server. By the way, the server is the next thing to be replaced. And so I want to thank our new client, which I cannot ever mention the name, but uh, they paid an invoice. We took that money and right away we pump it into new equipment so that we can run the model better for that client. And uh, we'll be replacing our server as well and uh, probably buying market data services. So all right, so our firm is continuing to focus on financial services. We continue to focus on making our model better, to learn about the markets, to participate in the markets, and to help you, as our viewers, to get more savvy and to make money in the markets. So I want to thank you very much. And if you happen to have um, interest in the market and you want to pick a portfolio, I just want to show you quickly how to do it because this is how we make money and it's um it's important that we stay in business and so i accept accept your cookies you come to the home page i'm going to show you it pretty small just so you see it and we do 100 percent there so you come to the home page chicago quantum you can learn about us if you ever need to do due diligence, let me know. 
um, we're Better Business Bureau rated. If you click on this link, you go right to the Better Business Bureau um, profile. If you go to the QEDC, you could do a search on US Advanced Computing Infrastructure. You can find us. We publish our research on Archive and Medium. The research is found here. We have articles on Medium found there. Um, I can show you client testimonials where clients made a lot of money with our model. And now that it's better, they're making even more money. And then we have our top investing questions. I'm going to point it out here. We spend a lot of time not only making the videos, but also um, curating sources of data for you. So let's say you want free bond market data. I didn't know where to get it. You go to FINRA, finramarketsmorningstar.com. You can get great information on publicly traded debt. Lots of other sources of financial data. You want top of the book viewer. You know what that is if you watched before. You want to know the top, let's say, 10 um, buys, the, the, the orders, right? The prices of the orders. Top five, let's say, buys. Top five sells with aggregated volume. And you want to know the last, let's say, five or 10 trades that were made. And you want to know it over four markets. You can get it for free from CBOE. Now, that's not all of them. We actually buy the NASDAQ book viewer, and that's how we finish it. But there's lots of info, right? You can go to NASDAQ for certain info. You can get um, options information. You can find out how many shares are shorted of a stock. This is interesting. Let's take a look at this one. I borrow. I don't really want to sell you services. I really want you to learn how to make money in the markets. So SMLP. What are we short today? Well, available to short is 450,000 shares. It'll cost you 12.2% in a fee. And um, it's interesting. Plenty of stock to short, right? Now, that number used to be in the millions. But for right now, at least it's going up. So it means it's an orderly market. And um, that's how many shares you can short. So let's go back to our... Yeah, we had questions about the National Stock Exchange of India, the Nifty 50. And so um, got some information about that. How do you find about short information? Let's see how many um, shares of SMLP are shorted. So you could short if you wanted to 450,000 shares. I don't know that I'd recommend that, but you might want to. And this is shortsqueeze.com. Let's take a look. What do they say here? Well... Not a lot of shares shorted, actually. It's a terribly small number. 9,500 shares shorted. So I actually made a big deal about this on Twitter when it was 63,400. I'm like, who shorts a stock with a price-to-earnings ratio of less than one? Who shorts a stock that's going to have dividend payments in a year that are probably going to be 10 bucks a share? Who wants to pay 10 bucks out of their own pocket for the chance of maybe making a buck, two bucks on the stock going down? Well, I guess they listened because it went from 63,000 to 9,500. So there's no short squeeze here at SMLP. But see, now you know how to do that. You come to our website, you look at the information that we're giving you for free, and then there's all kinds of stuff. There's like, who do you read, Jeff? Well, I like Zero Hedge, Tyler Durden. I like Coifin. I like FinViz. I like Seeking Alpha. Um, I love reading SEC filings. Love it. You get so much information. And then there were just general stock market questions. What is the market capitalization of a stock? I mean, there's regular investors out there who don't know what I'm talking about when I say market cap of SMLP is X. Well, now we explain it. A lot of things get explained. What's a gamma squeeze? How do I find stock quotes? What's a drawdown? What's a short squeeze? What's an efficient portfolio? What's beta? What's beta exposure? What's swing trading? All these things. And then we don't just talk about that. We actually talk about front running, right? Like different things about um, about stock trading. Kurtosis. What's a stock's kurtosis? What's the over-the-counter market? And why is it challenging? What's the doxy or dixie? I like Doxy better because I, I play Ingress. There's, or I play um, Harry Potter. There's Doxies. How many shares does a company have and how do you figure it out? Right? What, what are some of the bond questions that are relevant? 
how do you figure out what what's non-recourse debt? What's an inverted yield curve, right? What, and then talk about stock options. So these are things that people care about. These are things that it could take you decades to learn if you had to learn about it the hard way, or you could just come onto the website. It's like a it's like a master's degree in the stock market, bonds, and things like that. And we give it to you for free because at the end of the day. We're generating a lot of research where we're going to put people to work doing consulting. We're helping to make a couple of uh, very wealthy clients rich, and we're always looking for more clients. And so if we're able to help you, we want to help you. And then how do we make money? Right now, the way we make money is we sell an analysis. And I had a guy call me, and he, he actually said at the end of the call, look, don't worry, I got plenty of money. But made it sound like on the call that he didn't have any money. And I'm like, look, it's 150 bucks. You give me tickers, I'll do a stock analysis using quantum algorithms. And we can help you figure out where to prioritize your focus. And so, don't worry, 150 bucks I can afford. I'm doing like $100 million of investing. I'm like, all right, fine, fine. But it's not a lot of money, in fact, um, for most people, if you call me and you say, look, Jeff, I don't have 150, I'll make a coupon code for you. I don't care. We're not gonna get rich on 150 bucks here, but the point is you can spend 750 and we'll look at an entire stock set of stock exchanges or one stock exchange for you. So that has a lot of value. We'll look at bulls, we'll look at bears. 150, 750, and then if you want, you could pay us 7,500 bucks a week per person and we'll build algorithms for you, um, but then you own the algorithm. That's a, that's a one and done for us. Or you can call me for 30 minutes. Hey, Jeff, want to talk about stocks, talk about the market. It's 100 bucks. Again, not going to get rich on 100 bucks for 30 minutes, but at least you feel like you can you can buy a service. You can, you can help pay us, and then I can help pay our guys, right? We can buy equipment. We can pay for market data services and do even better. And so this is how we make money. So if you don't mind... Go ahead and buy an algorithm, buy a portfolio run, and uh, we're happy to help you pick stocks and build a plan for your next trading week. All right. Thanks very much. You take care now. Bye-bye.